That was good stuff. That was good stuff. That was fun. That was good stuff. That this next a, one's gonna be. This next one's gonna be even goodier. That was a, a, a very fucked up show you you showed us. Yes. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> Bunny. What? If you are a longtime listener of the Pope on Film podcast, well, then I am sorry for your loss, but let me remind you that no compensation shall be given for loss of time and or productivity. <laughs> uh, listen to the Pope on Film podcast at your own risk, is what I am saying. Yes. Besides that, I am a lover of history. I am a regular historiatrician. That's a clinical term <laughs> that only historiatricians like me know about. Oh, but I'm also oh, oh, a storyteller. I, thought, I thought you meant in the way of a disease or something like that. No, 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 no. But I'm also a storyteller, one with his own unique style and voice. And so what I like to do is I like to get a little known story from the history books and rework it into my own unique Razzmatazz <laughs> with jazz hands. I was doing jazz hands visually, but I tried to say razzmatazz in a tone which conveyed the jazz hands. Yes. And I think I nailed it, so I'm going to do that again. Rework it into my own unique razzmatazz. <laughs> and that is what this is. Yet another exciting installment of our long running feature. Steve's Historical Approximations! Yes. And be thank you. Thank you. And before we begin, let me once again remind you that this is an accurate piece of history that actually happened, but it has been slightly reworked into my own unique style and voice. I sometimes like putting uh, uh, words into people's mouths. And as such, it isn't 115% accurate, but it's not entirely false either, so it's in the 94 to 98% accuracy range. And this week on uh, Steve's Historical Approximations, or SHAP, mm -hmm. as I like to spell it on my notes, we're going to be talking about popes! <laughs> popes, yes, popes. Yes. You know, Bunny... Popes are a lot like Pokemon. There's way too many of them, and if you claim to know all of them, then you're a dirty fucking liar. <laughs> so just drop it. There have been 266 popes in the Roman Catholic Church since St. Peter considered the first pope in, like, 33 AD. And I don't care who you are, uh, whether you're... Uh, it, it, I... I whether you're a group of 266 priests, uh -huh. 266 musicians, 266 popes, 266 nuns, 266 politicians, 266 bowling alley employees, 266 uh, uh, Helens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get 266 people together, and a few of those people are going to be creepy ass nutsos. <laughs> True. Like Pope Julius II, who ruled from 1503 to 1513 and had a shit ton of mistresses and even had an illegitimate daughter. In fact, while he was Pope, charges were brought against him and they called him, quote, a sodomite covered with shameful ulcers. Okay. <laughs> and he was a pope. So what I'm saying is Pope Julius II, at least he knew how to party. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then there was Pope Benedict the Ninth, who was a young pope from a very powerful and wealthy family. What? What did I hear you say about sodomites being covered in shameful ulcers? No, Pope Julius II. I already told you this. I told you all of these pope stories. Pope Julius oh. II had a shit ton of mistresses, it, it fathered an illegitimate daughter, charges were brought against him because that's how fucking bad he was, and they called him, quote, a sodomite covered with shameful ulcers. They said that about a pope in court. If he was a sodomite and for, like, real, and he was covered in shameful ulcers, then he probably caught syphilis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be my pope guess. Pope Julius II 
the syphilis pope. The syphilis pope. Oh, fun fact. You know that uh, Columbus died of advanced syphilis? Who advanced syphilis? Yeah, he had good. AP syphilis. <laughs> he didn't have like, syphilis 101. He had the advanced shit. He well, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people died of it then uh, in that time, but like Columbus was more well known, so like, yeah, he had a died of advanced. So. Nice. He did not qualify for the dummies book of syphilis. Yeah, he was nope. straight too advanced. I wonder won't get out of this. Nope. Uh, really? Yeah. Adorable. <laughs> So Pope Benedict the Ninth, he was a young pope from a super powerful and super wealthy family. So as pope, he set about committing. Uh, and this is a quote from another pope. Another pope said this, fellow Pope Victor the Third. Okay. Talking of Pope Benedict the Ninth, he said that Pope Benedict the Ninth committed quote rapes, murders, and other unspeakable acts. We shall not talk about. <laughs> well, what I'm thinking is, I hope the family of Pope Benedict the Ninth got some residual checks from that HBO show with Jude Law that I never bothered to watch. Yes. The Young Pope. It was called The Young Pope. The Young Pope, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then this brings me to my third. This, this brings me to my third Pope story. This isn't the main story, okay. but I accidentally stumbled upon this story, and it was so good that I actually thought of making this the primary story, but it, this story is amazing. Okay. This story is amazing. Um, Pope Stephen the Sixth. Okay. S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Uh, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Pope Stephen the Sixth. He ruled from 1896 to 1897. He wasn't. He wasn't the longest pope. I know. He he ruled for one did, year. Did anybody dude, measure him? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Ready? But this dude, this dude carried a huge grudge. Okay. Pope Stephen the Sixth. So once he came into power, the first thing he said was, "Okay, I'm making a few decrees." Okay. Right. Okay. Fucking from Jersey. That last pope, Pope Formosus. Yeah. I fucking hate that guy. That last pope, Pope Formosus. <laughs> he, that guy was my enemy, my nemesis. Fuck that guy. I hated that guy so much. That guy was horrible. Finally, I'm I'm pope. I'm the good pope. But that last pope, basically, this guy like was was a uh, uh, Trump with Obama. Yeah. Finally, That's what it sounds like. Pope Stephen the Sixth in charge. Not like that last pope. That last pope was horrible. In fact, this is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do. My first thing is pope. Okay. First off, I'm I'm convening a court. Okay. Secondly, secondly, we're putting that last pope on trial. Hold on. And then when he's guilty, I'm gonna sentence him to death. <laughs> so then the Romans were like, okay. That's a lot to unpack. Uh, a number of things are wrong there. Where do we even start? You know what? I'm okay. So first off, you can't just convene a trial. Mm -hmm. You're you're a pope, not an emperor. You can't just say, "I'm going to start a trial." You're not Judge Wapner. Yes. You know, number two, you can't sentence people to death. Again, you're the Pope. You're not Judge Wapner, mm -hmm. which is, death sentences happened all the time on uh, the people's court. That's what made it so awesome. Yeah. And number three, this is the last this is the last bit. Maybe it should have been the first. But um, so the last Pope is dead. So you can't really sentence him to death. He's dead. He's already dead. Yeah, he, he's 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 dead. He's buried. He is a corpse. Well, he's dead and also a party pooper. Oh, oh, but here's the best part. Pope Stevie part six was all, okay, 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 okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me think this over. Let me think this over, okay? So, so Pope for Mosses is dead. All right. Ow, Eleanor, that hurts. So, Pope for Mosses is dead. Where's this motherfucker buried? Okay. 
So Pope Stephen the sixth dug up the last pope. He went to the grave where he was buried, dug a dug the casket out of the ground, opened up the casket, got his dead rotting corpse and propped it up in fucking court. <laughs> nice. And started a trial to to for a dead man found him guilty. Here's but then here's the best part. He he was found guilty. So what are you going to do? Kill him again? No. This is what you're going to do. They stripped him of his pope uni uniform, dressed him as a poor person, cut off three fingers on his right hand, specifically the blessing fingers. Uh huh. And reburied Pope Formosus. Then re re exhumed him and just threw his body in a fucking river. <laughs> and you know who did all of that? A fucking pope did. <laughs> okay. So what? But now, if you heard that on the news tomorrow night that Trump did it, how surprised would you be? No, if Trump if Trump did that tomorrow, the 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 amazing thing would be hearing Fox News downplay it. Yes. Why are these liberal snowflakes so upset that Trump dug up a corpse? Yeah. <laughs> what about her emails? Uh huh. So Pope Steve the Sixth could hold a grudge, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds so, like you could hold a bit of a grudge. Yeah. yeah. And Pope we don't Stephen the sixth. we don't specifically he, know what caused this kind of hate either. No, the, the no, he but but definitely he's my favorite pope. Him and Pope Lando. Pope I don't know what Pope I don't know what Pope Lando did. I just know that he has the coolest name. Yes. I imagine he he was like the first black pope and he's got like a cape and he's like, "Hey, <laughs> I'm Lando." Who wants some malt liquor? <laughs> that's Pope Lando. But that's not our main story. Our main story revolves around Pope Gregory the Ninth. Gregory the Ninth. He was Pope from 1227 to 1241. His original name was Ugolino, and he was originally like a like a lawyer. <laughs> he also came up with a little thing. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called the Inquisition. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's, he also, it's, it's crossed my attention. Yeah. Yeah. He also started a vicious propaganda campaign to undermine King Frederick II, who he fucking hated. So this guy isn't the the like the the best pope in the world. No. Yeah. So so this. This story happened in 1232, allegedly. I say allegedly because I found 300 pages on the internet that confirmed this story and one page from an atheist site that denies it. Okay. So I'm not 100% sure of its validity, but, it, but everyone agrees that this happened. So in 1232, Pope Greg the Nueve decreed that, he, you know, he was really serious about combating the devil. The devil is real. The devil is everywhere. And we need to stop the devil. We mm -hmm. need to get rid of devils. Look at that spider there. That spider, you know why you're scared of that spider? Because that, that spider's the devil. Let's kill that spider. We're going to kill that spider. Kill all spiders. Can we kill all spiders, please? Spiders are from the devil. Can we kill all <laughs> these spiders? We need to kill all the spiders. We need to get rid of impure, impure thoughts. Are you having an impure thought? That's because... Uh, you're demonic. We need, we need, we need to torture you now. We're gonna torture the, this person. Anyone who has impure thoughts, we gotta torture them. Let's torture these people. We really need to fight the devil. We need to literally fight the devil wherever we find the devil. And and apparently, Pope Greg the Nine was a dog person because he okay. decreed that cats, that all cats are incarnations of the devil. Well, that's true, though. 
Yeah, yeah. Whether whether we, we this, have a cat, we know. <laughs> whether this decree happened or not, I think we can all agree that yes, all cats are incarnations of the devil. Yes, that's something we can all agree on. Mm-hmm. So after this announcement, even being an Europe, atheist, I take exception for cats. Yeah, yeah. So then after this announcement, all of Europe just said, "Well, okay." Let's start mass murdering cats. <laughs> so like so like this is World War II for cats. Yeah. Cause suddenly they're they're grabbing all the cats by the necks and throwing them in these bins and just murdering them. That, that was Europe's hot new trend, cat murdering. And you have that one cat who's just like you ask his name and he just says the chocolate mousse. The, the sad part is there was one cat that was a clown cat, and uh-huh. the clown would perform for the kittens to get them to come to the place where they were murdering the cats. Uh, at least as far as we believe, because that movie hasn't been released yet. Yeah. Garfield worked on that film for <laughs> yeah. five years. Yes. Hopefully one day we'll be able to see it. But I love the idea of people in like England killing every cat they saw. There's something about that that's morbidly hilarious to me. Hey there, Bevis. What you doing? Well, blimey, I'm going to have some fish and chips and then go strangle me some kittens. (laughs) Cool. Can I join you? All right, so everybody's killing cats, especially black cats, which is why to this day, to this day, mm-hmm. everyone hates Nicolas Cage. Yeah. And black cats, those things, those two things. Yeah. So cats are being killed left and right. Literally, you see a cat, you just got to kill it and cutting cats' heads off and just disemboweling them. It's a really fun time for uh, soon-to-be serial killers. Yeah. <laughs> and and just cats are being killed all over the place because of Pope Greg the fuckface. Mm-hmm. Because of so in Europe, because of Pope Greg the fuckface, they're killing the majority of cats because of the devil and whatever. But then, uh, who starts coming in into Europe? Rats. Yes. Carrying the bubonic plague. Oh, that's all right, because they're rats. The massive amount of cats we have here in Europe will take care of. Ooh. (laughs) Well, then, thanks, Pope Greg the Bunny, because you hated cats. That killed a whopping crap ton of people. Hooray! (laughs) Uh, Sorry, for that time period. Huzzah! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Roman Catholicism. <laughs> and that's the story. That's the story it. of Pope Greg the fuckface. But also, side story, Pope Stephen Part 6, uh, he held a big grudge. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. It's It's sad that we are not further along as a species yet, though. Because really... How far away are we from that? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, kind of sad. Yeah, and looks like that is it for Steve's historical approximations this week, or Shap, as I like to call it. Next week, I'm very excited. Next week is spring break, so the kids will be out of school, and the teens will be out of school, and Natasha will be out of school, and she has already promised to. Uh, run a big portion of next week okay because next week we will like, be like doing all the- of next week no uh no uh the podcast next week oh the podcast next week, the film we will be discussing next week is the classic disney pixar film wally and we will be doing it because the last time that uh eleanor watched it natasha just went off yeah. About the secret hidden things that are that are hiding in this film. And and also she said a wonderful story recently about Native Americans and gender and, and she really opened my eyes about gender roles and sex 
in Native American cultures. And so so that will be Steve's historical approximations next week, or SHAP, as I like to call it. Uh, it might be Natasha's historical approximations. It might it might be Nahop, yeah. which doesn't have the same ring to it. No. But still, next week we'll be talking about gender and sex with the help of a very special guest. That is next week. So join us next week for more of the Popon Film Podcast. And cut on that.